right. Well, I'm here with Miles. Miles, you're our creative and man, I'm a botch your title here. <laughs> All good. No. Creative, creative and, and production, production director. director. That's Holy what I'm gonna say. Because I'm gonna botch my own title. <laughs> Online and connections pastor. So yeah. No, it's good. Um yeah, well, we are finishing up. We just finished okay, this six week dive into Habakkuk. It's crazy. Minor profit. Yeah. It's really good, but it is a lot, I think, because yeah. it's a minor profit. Most of mm-hmm. us probably haven't spent a lot of time here. Sure. Um, but I think a lot of what we've unpacked in this is probably things that um, we've either run into or maybe asked questions without even knowing it. Of right. Dealing with all yeah. the sense of, of suffering, that's holiness and injustice, and just really even un- understanding like what is a prophet and right. what's an oracle and like unpacking all of these things. Yeah. and um, where it's, I love this, the the beauty, but the challenge as Habakkuk concludes here in For chapter sure. three. Um, if we just read that and let's just un- unpack this. I think a lot of us probably sit in this spot of like, how do I hold the reality of our broken world and maybe the pain and suffering that we've mm-hmm. experienced with a God who is good and mm-hmm. who is God, no matter what. Yeah. And that's what kind of the truth we've been chewing on for, right. for six weeks now. And so yeah, I'll start here in verse 17 and just these three verses and um, you know, let's just press into this. And sure. so, right, this is Habakkuk here, just rejoicing in the Lord. And he says, though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places to the choir master with stringed instruments. Hmm. So when you look at this, and maybe even right this reality of like, Habakkuk is painting this bleak picture, Mm -hmm. right? But then he's rejoicing in God. And so, right, he's he's confident in who God is. And so, how have you seen even in in your life, like why why having confidence in God is extremely important and beneficial in in dark times? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the curious things, and I, I feel like Matt, you would probably agree, especially with, I've, I've, you know, come into the office. I need, I, I'm walking around trying to find you. I find you, but you're in your offer, office counseling with people and talking through people's experiences and things they have going on. I think one of the interesting things about working for a church is we really need to have a strong answer to this question. Yeah. Like it'd be a real bummer to to work at a church or be a part of the movement and ministry of what God is doing in the now and not know how to answer how we can be confident in God in dark yeah. times, right? Yeah. And so I would say that like maybe like when you look at how Habakkuk is concluding this, especially with how he's saying, um, almost in like this similar to Psalmsy kind of closure yeah. of how he views God and how he will rejoice uh, at the deliverance that God brings him through. I think we have uh, a much more robust way <laughs> to have confidence in God because of the fact that at our point in life, uh, Jesus came and died on the cross and gave us grace mm-hmm. we didn't deserve. So not that this means to be a cop in any way, but why can we have confidence in God in darker times is because if anything, the Bible tells us that suffering, dark times, and those things are guaranteed, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. the thing that we also know that is guaranteed is that Jesus provides hope, restoration, and that there is something beyond the suffering that we have in the present that we're moving towards. And mm-hmm. again, that's not meant to like cop out the fact that times are not always easy to live through. Like they are real and legitimate. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, Christy Stevens, our women direct women's ministry director mm-hmm. and I, we talked through how the church often has this habit of kind of like glossing over mm-hmm. suffering and making yeah. it, it's just like, it'll be okay. It'll yeah. be all good, yeah. you know? But the reality is, is that if we don't give people enough time to acknowledge the suffering, the pain, yeah. it, and and truthfully um, have kind of a, you know, iron in the fire of those painful moments to be able to see God in a right way, hmm. uh, we do people a disservice by not acknowledging suffering appropriately. Yeah. But the caveat to that, though, is still that even different and almost more beneficial, like we're in a great position um, in time in that 
unlike Habakkuk, where it's just exclusively the God of my fathers, the God yeah. of this land, it is not only that, but it is also we have Jesus. And that's a crazy thing to kind of acknowledge. So, but what about you, I guess, after yeah. of everything I said, especially with like working in a ministry context, yeah. how would you respond to that? Well, and I think that, I think that's where we do have to sit of the, right? That's such a good word of, I think we want to believe the lie, um, right? Like people talk about like, put on your, your church clothes, put on yeah. your church mask. Yeah. And I think like, man, that's such a dangerous lie that, Specifically, I think the American church has has believed of like Jesus equals um right no like no suffering or no yeah, hardship right. instead of like no like Jesus himself from his mouth says, right, in this world you will have trouble, mm -hmm. but take heart, I've overcome the world. Yeah. And so I think there's beauty in in us being willing to right, like Habakkuk here saying, okay. Even if all these awful things, right? And so we don't, I don't have a fig tree, right? right. I don't have fruit on the vines, <laughs> but it's a good sense though. of like, okay, what. in this, uh, right, in an agricultural sense where like yeah. that was their source of provision. And yeah. so like they needed yeah. that, right? Their jobs, all those things, so like to equate it to this. Okay. So if I don't have, if I don't have a job, if I don't have a way to put food on yeah. the table, uh -huh. right? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Like that's right. in, in that's essence, there are all these, saying, right? all these things that are impacted there. And so to help us understand, it's like, yeah, okay. I can rejoice in God if I don't have like <laughs> yeah. no. And so it's that, okay, coming to that point of saying that. And I think that kind of goes with the the reality of um as God has brought us through, right? And and you've pressed into this, even like with our with our staff of us recognizing like as we push for like generations investing. Cause I think there's something about as God has been faithful to this generation. And and so often it's he uses others, mm -hmm. right, to help guide them and, and raise sure, them right. up and for us to push through. And so I think that's a way that we can um be champions of who God is in others' life because we we say, here's how he has proven himself faithful. Not that somehow it's like God has to prove himself to us, yeah, right. But that we can worship and say, No, he is good, mm -hmm. right? He is faithful and and that there's opportunity to step into others' mess because right that's in essence the gospel is that we were dead in our sin. Yeah. We were completely and utterly unable to save ourselves. And Jesus, right, came and he put on flesh and he died on the cross, bearing right the wrath and the sin that we deserve. And that he made a way through his death and resurrection. And that in the midst of others suffering and brokenness, that we can step in in the church where we're willing to to talk about the the hard realities of the world and step in and and run towards right those in our church that man they just lost their job yeah um and that this balance of like we can just sit with that and say right not this oh god's good everything will be okay right, that but like that on a bullet wound scenario we can right? we can sit and like weep with and say yeah. that god's okay yeah. and like you know lament with and step into those spaces and um Right, and so pressing into that and sharing, here's how the Lord has been my strength. I think that's why right story is so important. Instead so of just yeah. let's just sing these these disconnected songs, but like let's sing and worship, and then yeah. let's learn to share a story in a way where I'm not the hero, yeah. right? But Jesus, Jesus is, and here's right. here's the truth of who He is, of what He's done, and why He gets all the glory. Yeah, a hundred percent. So like, kind of like tagging back. There's a few things that I'd love to like break down of what you said, but the most kind of first launching point. So you talked about like the relationship of one, like suffering, mm -hmm. confidence in God, but you started talking about like championing the who God is yeah. and his goodness. And so I guess it's it's almost like, okay, how do we take the obvious, which is God is worth trusting in yeah. in the in the less fortunate times and we know that it's going to happen that way, but we have Jesus. Those are those are the obvious things. But then the next step is what do we do as individuals to champion the goodness of God and what we know about him when we yeah. are suffering? In other words, to say, it's just like, how would you encourage someone that's going through a tough time yeah. to use that tough time as a moment of testimony, as a moment of faith, and almost what was what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for yeah. good yeah. kind of scenario. Yeah. Um, how do you, how would you encourage someone to take a moment and almost twist it into something that can be God honoring? Yeah. And so I think all this goes back to like, I think the the danger so often for American Christians mm. is we are very reactive in engaging with 
things of the faith <laughs> yeah. instead of being proactive. Right. The reason that I get into community isn't because everything's already falling apart. Yeah. It's because I need to be proactive to say, right, I need, right, say, right, Jesus, solid ground, right, firm foundation. Yeah. And then these things built on if I wait to to build the house, right, or to right, to fix the roof yeah. or right, or to put on the new door until the storm is coming, it's too late. It's too late, yeah. But yeah, what we know is that the storm is going to be coming. Right. And there's there's going to be another storm, right? And that shouldn't scare us, but it should say, um, right, how can we begin to posture ourselves in a way that's proactive, mm-hmm. um, you know, and how that can tangibly look is, okay, what, what happens outside of Sunday? And so things yeah. like, you know, we have, we have scripture written on our house, um, and that may seem like weird for some, and it's not just like these these cheesy, cute like things that we found in the TJ Maxx like <laughs> discount bin. But like, right, Jan, like my like she just like hand wrote a lot of these, and these are like right scripture or like some worship songs that like have yeah um right reminded us of of who God is in those moments that when storms coming that when we're having a, a really bad day, a sure. really bad week, right? It's constantly there in front of us yeah. that like we can't escape it. Um, setting those rhythms of we're going to pray with our kids and they don't always like it or don't want to. And like, we ask them like, you know, do you want to pray? And they can say, no, and that's fine because they're like, like five. Sure, and so, right. right? Um, but I think it is that sense of being proactive um, so that you can have that confidence because that's, yeah. that's where like confidence is built, right? Like, like riding a bike. And I think what's hard is, um, why I think sometimes it's so frustrating maybe for for someone who's like grown up in the church, but just on Sundays, it's like, man, you can't learn to ride a bike in a hurricane. Um, it's going to be right. really hard. Like riding a bike is hard hard enough. Don't ask me how long it took me to learn to ride a bike. A long time, way longer <laughs> how long, than How have, long did it take? A long time. So Do you know um, how a quantity, like weeks, months? I did. It's, it's embarrassing. Whatever Jesus is, right? <laughs> Delivered me from shame. So, I mean, I was probably <laughs> more right, closer to being a teenager than, yeah. And so like, right. Yeah. And so, and, and because like, and like laugh at that, some of that too is I kept putting it off and yeah, so it just sure. made it worse and worse. Yeah. Um, you know, and so in some ways there's a little bit of like this man, for some of us, maybe you're feeling that, like keep putting it off and say yeah. like the beautiful thing about Jesus is that he he's good um, yeah. and that he's gracious and merciful. Yeah. Um, and so like today we can take steps. If maybe the, the biggest thing in unpacking this is saying, and Jesus, I don't want to be reactive in the storms. Yeah. Um, I want to seek you. Um, I want to make those adjustments. And um, I know that's something that anyone on staff would love to yeah. have those conversations to help. For sure. Now, I guess like as a quick aside, because I think it's super important to always like diagnose the problem. Yeah. <clears throat> You say, you know, people keep putting it off and you, you know, self-deprecated, yeah. like, ah, you'd be laughing yeah. at me about how long it took me to learn how to ride a bike. And you said you just kept putting it off. Let's kind of ignore that for a second. Why do you think people put off the idea of reorganizing their priorities to focus on mm-hmm. God? Like, it's one of those, like, wh- what, yeah. uh, you know, I do not know why I do these things, but yeah. but I'm doing them. And people reorient their life around social activities and things that have zero mm-hmm. things to do with church, God, and their spiritual health. But they are slow to the process of organizing yeah. themselves around faith. Why do you think people do that? Yeah. Is there is there anything about us as people that cause us to do that? Yeah, I think it's the this balance of like, um, right? We have a real enemy in this world for sure um, that wants to pull us away from anything that is going to draw us closer to to God and be honoring and worshipful of God. And I think with that too is that specifically, I think in our cultural context, we we are very like emotion filled and driven or want like quick fixes. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so I think what's hard is there's a lot of these things that like, we don't even realize how much our minds are are hardwired for this like quick hits. Yeah. And so it's really frustrating because the end of the day, like God is not a vending machine. Yeah. And so, uh, but I think we may not even realize how deep some of that like false belief about who God is runs that we say, well, because I did this and then this, all these things didn't instantly change. Mm-hmm. Um, 
right? The the goal in right my faith is not that I become absent from the storms, right? But that God is the God that sustains me through those storms. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a big difference. And that's why we looked at a lot of things because it's this, well, if I have, right, better job. So it's this has to, it's going to get removed and all this stuff or, right, yeah. better school district, better whatever, better better family, better sure. whatever, you know? And so like all these things that we run to, instead of saying, I, God is the God who went right. My, my faith and priorities is that, right? Jesus is good and he's worth following and that he's the God who sustains through. Um, and so it's, it's hard. And I think mm -hmm. we don't like that. We're conditioned to right by nature, right? Like you said, like, I do what I don't want to do and what yeah. I don't want to do is yeah, what I do. Yeah, and so we have all right. these things going against us, but I think it is in our specific context culturally is we are running to these achieving things or these quick, these quick hits yeah. um, instead of right. Pressing through and pressing into Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I agree with all those points. I would even say like the additional side as to why like families, mm. like larger yeah. groups, yeah. why they don't bother. Um, is because we're convinced in some way that the burden of getting my family into a process, a new process, yeah. especially if you have younger kids, yeah, um, people don't want to bother other people. Mm. Uh, and the weird, oh, yeah. the weird thing about that is like, I think people don't give enough people in church enough credit, and vice versa. Mm. I think um, it's it's a terrible cyclical problem. It's just like the people that want to pilot communities want want sometimes, unfortunately, they do it on their own terms, right? Um, and then the yeah. other side of that is that because there's been a history of people always like feeling like not even that they're not being accommodated for, but just because that they're a bother, they've been taught yeah. to believe that they're a bother. Now they've moved on into life and have kids and do all these things. And now it's like, man, not only is it me, it's all of my team and my whole family's coming yeah. into a spot where I just don't know that we can do it. And so, uh, you know, Christy Stevens would be a great person to say this out loud for, for moms is to say yeah. that you've been taught to take a back seat, mm. but that's not the way that it should be. Yeah. Um, your faith to be as vibrant in your faith for the sake of your kids, your husband, all these things is, is just as valuable as anybody else in your mm -hmm. family group and similar fathers, children, and all these different people that can have this, like I'm counted out mentality on how to get connected in community. Like you said, like this idea of like, you wouldn't want to try to ride a bike in a, in a hurricane. Yeah. Um, why are we waiting until the worst case scenario to try and find it? And I think that as both Christ followers that are creating environments, as much as there are like new Christ followers are ones that are new to communities. We just need to cut each other a lot more slack. Yeah. Lower the barrier to entry on how to get involved. Don't make complications more complicated. <laughs> like yeah. it is it is hard enough to have a family and try to go to dinner, yeah. much less go to yeah. a Bible study. No, and that's and that's such a good world word, right? It's like this pendulum. So it's like it's not gonna be learning to ride a bike in a hurricane, nor can we be expecting like the bike has to just stay on the shelf yeah. and be all night and pray. And I think like that's some of that is it's this, I know my mess yeah, and then combined with your mess right, yeah. and coming What's together, like? it's, it's like super <laughs> messy and yeah. it's chaotic. And I think that's some of that we have to move, right? Jesus didn't call us to just sit in the classrooms, mm -hmm. right? He called us to, right, to live life together mm -hmm. and life is messy. And so that's such a good word of that, right? And could he cut it? each other slack it's that no we need to display right the grace sure. of jesus to each other and recognize that our families are in different places and like let's let's do this journey together and it is a journey um and and so i think that is it's like if you're on a journey there's going to be the right the mountaintops and there's going to be the valleys sure. there's going to be the sunny days and there's going to be the storms and it's like how do we press through together recognize that jesus sustains and i'm not sustained by um how well I can deal with you or vice versa. Right. It's no, like if Jesus has called us yeah, right, to do this, then then let's do it. And yeah. not just cop out and say, cause it's messy, we're not going to. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's such a good word. And um, yeah, it's just been so enjoyable just unpacking these and just needing to sit with this. And I think there's there's just so much, um, you know, that we could keep diving into, but you know, yeah. I think at the, at the heart of it is this reality of, right? May our hearts be postured like Habakkuk here, yeah. where at the end of the day, he says, you know what, no matter what happens, right, even if, right, the things in this world that we're looking to for provision or for comfort, 
even if they aren't there, right? We're going to rejoice in Jesus, yeah. in Jesus alone. Mm -hmm. um, and so may that be the posture of us at NCC or those that um, are getting connected here, that that's what we want to be about, is about Jesus um, and pressing into to him. Absolutely. Great job, Matt. Well, it was great talking with you, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah. look forward to the next series we're doing yeah. this thing, man. <laughs>